Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a stab at building our very own DIY boosted board. Now that boosted is out of business, we figured that we were overdue for a tutorial teaching you guys how you could build your very own boosted clone. We tried to emulate the feeling that the boosted board has by using the same deck that they used on their V2, the loaded Vanguard. We also used the 85mm Kagawama wheels and a split enclosure setup to make it flex just like the boosted does. This board, however, does have some significant differences, including wider extended trucks and dual 6374 motors for added power. We do recognize that this quite significantly changes the riding feel as it's much heavier and also more powerful. However, this was definitely intended because we were looking to make something pretty torquey. So with all that being said, let's get into how we made this board. The deck we're using is the Loaded Vanguard deck, which is the same deck that Boosted used on their V2 Boosted board. This deck has plenty of flex to absorb many of the vibrations for the rider. It's a premium, top of the line, longboard deck that's very popular. One of the most iconic features of the Boosted board is the bright orange orangutan wheels. So we decided that we use the 85mm Kagawamas. They're slightly larger than those used on the V2 at 85mm as opposed to 80 they're soft, grippy, and wide, and feature the Kegel core, which we absolutely love. The trucks we used are the M-Boards Extended Caliber Trucks. For a boosted clone, you could just as easily use standard caliber trucks, but we wanted to be able to hit dual 6374 motors on them. As you can see right here, they're quite a bit wider than a standard pair of longboard trucks, and feature longer axles and hangers. The sole reason for not choosing caliber trucks was just so that we could fit 6374s instead of 6355s. We are going to be using some Red's Bones bearings, which we immediately put into the Kagawama wheels. Simply slide a bearing onto the axle of a truck, and then firmly press your wheel onto the truck, forcing the bearing into the hole. Then repeat the same process for the other side. The pulleys that we are going to be using on this build are the 38 tooth Kegel pulleys from Evolve Skateboards. These are bearing to pulleys, which means they have a bearing inside that goes on the axle. They're made for a 10mm axle, but we only have 8mm, so what we're going to do is replace the 10mm wide bearing with a standard 8mm skate bearing. All we did was use an allen key to pull out the 10mm bearing, and then put the 8mm bearing in its place. This is a crucial step to make sure that your pulleys spin nicely on your axles. You will of course want to repeat this process for the other wheel pulley too. The Kegel pulley perfectly matches the Kagawama wheels, and all you'll have to do is to align the pegs on the wheel pulley with the core of the wheel, and then just push firmly into place so that the wheel pulley slides in. Make sure you get it nice and snug in the wheel, that way it doesn't come out. The next thing that we realized shortly after putting these bearing to wheel pulleys onto the wheels is that the axle of our truck was not long enough to accommodate both. As you can see here, once we have the wheel on with the wheel pulley, the lock nut will not fit on the edge of the axle. With no way to lock the wheel onto the truck, we had to extend the axle by cutting down the hanger. We did this by shaving off the edge of the hanger with a Dremel tool, and then slowly using a screwdriver to chisel away at the bit that came off. This is a tedious process that takes a lot of time and is quite frankly annoying. If you don't have access to a Dremel, you can also do it with a hacksaw, which we've done in the past. Once you're done getting the piece off of the hanger, make sure to shave it down so that the bearing will slide nicely and not hit any grooves. Once you've cut off enough of the hanger, you'll be able to secure the wheel onto the axle using the nut. The motor mount that we are using for this build is a Caliber 2 idler motor mount from Boardnamics. This motor mount features a clamp style with two pieces that clamp onto the caliber hanger, and then a motor plate which bolts onto that. These motor mounts are of some of the highest quality and I would definitely recommend them to anyone looking for Caliber 2 motor mounts. This motor mount utilizes a clamping style where there's two pieces that are held together by two bolts and then a nut on both sides. When you tighten the nut, it'll push the two pieces together clamping down on the truck. So the first step in assembling the drivetrain is to put the clamp onto the hanger of the truck. You can just slide it on while the nuts are still loose, that way it's wide enough to fit on the hanger. Then slide the motor mount as far down the hanger as you think it needs to be until you've found a spot you've liked. Then you can lightly clamp it to the truck, but not too hard, using an allen key and the proper wrench for the nut. Now moving on to the motors, we're using two 6374-190kV motors from Flipsky. If you've ever watched one of our videos, we pretty much always go to these motors just because they are so powerful. We love the 6374 and it's going to be a great addition to this build. 
Not only are they super powerful, but they also provide a great amount of speed. The next step is to mount the motor to the motor mount using four M4 bolts. You can tighten them into the motor through the motor mount using an Allen key. You'll notice that we've got the motor phase wires orientated in a very specific way so that they're facing back towards the truck. Once you've got the motor mounted to the motor mount, you can then slide the motor mount over the hanger and onto the clamp. At this point, you'll be able to see whether or not the shaft of your motor lines up with the wheel pulley. In our case, it didn't, and we realized that the motor mount needed to be a lot closer to the wheel pulley than it was. We then re-loosened the clamp so that we could adjust it to be where the motor plate should be. Once it was in the desired location, we retightened it using the allen key and the wrench. We then slid the motor plate over the hanger and onto the clamp, knowing that it was in the perfect location, and tightened it to the clamp using the M4 bolts provided. The bolt goes through the motor plate, then through the motor clamp, and is held on by a nut on the other side. Once the motor plate was attached to the clamp, we put the keyway into the shaft of the motor. Once the keyway was on, we slid the motor pulley onto the shaft of the motor. This is a really tricky step because the keyway and the motor pulley are pretty tight and it'll take some persistence to get it on. The belt we are using is a 320mm HTT5 belt which we got from Polybelt. Simply slide the belt over the pulley and over the hanger and then put the wheel onto the axle. Rotate the wheel until it grips to the belt and aligns itself. You'll notice that the tension here is really quite off and there's no way to adjust the motor itself. That's because this mount uses an idler pulley which is used to adjust the tension. An idler pulley allows your belt to have more traction as it allows the belt to grip to more teeth on both pulleys. Simply slide the idler pulley through the pulley on the motor mount and then press it against the belt to provide the proper tension. You want to make sure that it's tight but not too tight that it prevents the belt from turning. Then tighten the idler pulley in its desired location by using the allen key and the wrench to hold the bolt on the other side in place. You'll then want to repeat this exact same process except for the other side to mount the other motor to the truck. Once you get both sides done, test to make sure that everything spins nicely. Moving on to more of the electronic side, the ESC that we are going to be using is the Torque ESC which is essentially just a VESC. These particular VESCs from Torque boards are not the most reliable or the best of quality so we're going to be upgrading these to a Fock box or maybe even a Storm Core if we can get our hands on one in the future. You'll need a parallel connector and a CAN bus connector because there's two separate VESCs. The battery we are using is a 10S2P Sanyo battery pack from Ownboard Skateboards. This battery pack has a surprisingly low discharge rate at only 24 amps. In the future, we are going to be using a 10S2P 40T pack, which will have a much higher discharge rate and will be much better for this application. The configuration for this pack is perfect and it comes with an enclosure that resembles the boosted board enclosure, but it's really not quite as sleek. It'll get the job done and make it look similar, but not exactly the same as a boosted. Next, we have the rear enclosure, which is also from Ownboard and resembles the boosted rear enclosure. Again, it's not quite as sleek, but it'll get the job done. Included with these enclosures are also some very nice foam pads which will help a little bit with some waterproofing. Next we did a rough layout of where everything would sit on the deck so we could tell where we needed to drill holes for the enclosures and where the wires would go through. We have the battery on the front and the ESC rear enclosure on the back. At this point the boosted really started taking shape. Once we dialed down exactly where we wanted the components to be, we mounted the sticky adhesive foam pads to the deck that way we knew exactly where we could drill our holes. Because we are using a split enclosure design, the wires will go on top of the deck through holes. 
we first drilled holes in the battery side, that way those wires could come out, and then in the enclosure side, that way they could go through each of the holes and then on top of the deck. We then used a router to cut a channel in the top of the deck that was the exact same thickness as the wire. The wires will then go inside of the channel. It was a pretty risky move that I really hated to do, but it was a necessity to make this board as close to the actual boosted as possible, with the wires going on top of the deck. We then threaded the wires through the top of the deck and the holes, and then cut the wires to the perfect length before soldering the proper connectors to them. The next thing we did was to use the Dremel to cut a little piece on the back side of this enclosure to allow the wires to pass through them. There was a hole on the other side, but we wanted the enclosure to sit the other way to make it look more like a boosted board. For a switch, we're going to be using a Flipsky Anti-Spark Pro switch. This switch works pretty simply by having an input and an output and then a simple LED push button switch. We soldered an XT90 connector to the output side of the power switch which would go to the XT90 on the VESC and then we soldered some 5.5mm bullet connectors to the input side which would go to the battery. The enclosure came with a pre-drilled hole so we threaded the power switch through the hole and attempt to get it to fit. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too small so we had to go back in with our drill and make it a little bit larger to accommodate the switch. Once we made the switch the perfect size, we got the switch back in through the hole on the side of the enclosure and threaded it through. We tightened it in place to the edge of the enclosure by using the nut. The result was a pretty flush and nice looking power switch. We then went to the portion of the wire after the out section on the power switch and spliced it open with a box cutter to expose some of the wire. On both the positive and negative wire coming out of the out section on the power switch, we soldered the positive and negative wire from the percentage indicator, that way it could determine the voltage and thus a percentage. At this point came the real challenge, fitting everything into this minuscule enclosure. Our ESCs are pretty large so it was really difficult to fit them both in. If we had something like a Unity or even a Flipsky Dual 6.6, it would be much easier to fit everything in. But at this point we just spent a couple hours tinkering with the best possible solution to get everything to fit in nicely. Because the motors are so far away from the VESC, we made these bullet connector extender wires with 5.5mm bullet connectors going into the VESC and 4mm bullet connectors plugging into the motors. We connected the battery to the wires going through the top of the deck using an XT60 connector and then we connected the two wires that come out of the top of the deck and into the ESC enclosure using 5.5mm bullet connectors into the power switch. The loaded Vanguard comes stock with some clear grip tape on top which we didn't really like and we really wanted the black look on it so we took some sandpaper to the top of the deck and then just sanded it away that way it would be nice and smooth and we could stick some grip tape on to a non-abrasive and smooth surface. You'll also notice all of the threaded lock nut inserts on the top of the deck, which for some reason the footage is gone for and we weren't able to find it and edit it into this video. Basically know that we put these threaded lock nut inserts into the top of the deck, that way we could put a screw on the bottom of the deck through the enclosure and bolt it in. After we did this, we put the grip tape on top of the deck. We made sure to keep the wires nice and flat, that way the grip tape would keep them pushed down and nice and flush with the edge of the deck. Once the grip tape was on, we made sure that it was stuck on really nicely and cut it to the perfect size. We used a box cutter to cut out the outline after making some nice grooves with a rasp. We then mounted the front trucks to the deck by using a riser pad and then mounting the trucks on. We then plugged in the 5.5mm bullet connectors that go through the top of the deck into the 5.5mm bullet connectors on the inside of the power switch. We then plugged in the two wires that go into the percentage indicator and after that we plugged in the power switch into the power switch that's in the circuit. We then plugged in the XT90 connector from the power switch into the parallel XT90 connector that feeds into the VESCs. All of the electronics were then mounted into the enclosure using Velcro. Lastly, the remote controller that we're going to be using is the Flipsky VX1. We chose the VX1 because it resembles the boosted board remote a lot. Here we have the VX1 set up for the V4 VESC because we have a version 4 VESC in the Torque ESC. The VX1 is a really solid remote choice and it's our second favorite remote only behind the VX2 due to the added features that it has. For, for a simple, more affordable option, the VX1 is a really great solution. To get this remote to work, you'll just need the receiver and then also the cable that comes with it. The cable is really what differentiates between a V4 and a V6. You want to make sure that the white cable is on the left side of the receiver just as it is now. 
you'll also notice that one of the wires is not plugged into anything and this one will go into your positive wire on your battery. To plug the remote into the VESC, you'll just want to find the UART port and then plug the 6-pin connector into the 6-pin on the UART. Like I mentioned earlier, the white wire that comes out and is not attached to anything will go into the positive wire from your battery. So we just exposed a little bit of wire and soldered it to it. After that, we connected the sensor wires onto the sensor wire ports on the VESCs. That way we could run our VESC in censored FOC mode. We connected the bullet connectors into the phase wires of the motor and then also the sensor wires into the motor sensor wires. To finish the electronics off, we programmed the VESCs in FOC mode using the VESC tool. Once the board was ready to run, we sealed the enclosures up by screwing in the bolts to the threaded lock nut inserts on the top of the deck. For a finishing touch, we added these little motor wire holding clips to keep them nice and organized. We bolted them in through the truck bolt and then threaded all the wires through them. This prevents the wires from moving around too much and staying under the motors while riding. At this point, the board was done and this is what the finished project looked like. So there you guys have it, that's how we built this DIY boosted board clone. I'm honestly more than happy with how this build turns out, I think it looks pretty dang good for a boosted clone. And I honestly think that I might mistake this for an actual boosted board if I saw it riding out in the streets. Our boosted clone also feels incredible to ride, and we can definitely accredit this to the flexible, high quality loaded vanguard deck. There's definitely a reason why the boosted board was so popular and why they used the loaded vanguard on their V1 and V2 boards. The carving using this deck is absolutely incredible and is unrivaled. The power on this board is absolutely insane. We thought that the 10S2P Sanyo battery pack would prove to be a huge bottleneck in terms of the power output, but this board absolutely kills any hill. This hill right here is over 30% and is by far the steepest hill we've ever tested any of our boards on, and the boosted board just flew all the way up it. This is definitely due to the fact that we have a 1538 tooth gearing on this with small 85mm wheels. Once we upgrade to a Foxbox Unity and also start using the Samsung 40T 10S2P pack, it's going to be even more powerful and it's going to be insane to test that one out. Now, this board is not at all in any way a perfect clone of a boosted board. One of the huge upsides of the boosted board was the fact that it was perfect for commuting. The motors weren't overpowered, it was sleek, it was well designed, everything was integrated perfectly into an actual vehicle rather than a thrill seeking device. This boosted board on the other hand is not exactly like the boosted in that way, it's more of the DIYers thrill seeker version placed on a loaded vanguard deck. So for that reason, I'd call it more of a loaded Vanguard build rather than an actual boosted clone. The extended caliber trucks and the dual 6374s truly put this DIY boosted board in a league of its own, which is completely unnecessary for the purpose of building a perfect clone. If we were to do this again and try to make an actual boosted board clone, we'd definitely use some standard caliber 2 trucks and dual 6355 motors. This being said, to me, this is the perfect version of the boosted board. I've always loved massively torquey powertrains and super fast and powerful boards, so this was definitely going to be the build that I wanted to do for my personal wants. In terms of specs, this board has a top speed of around 26 miles an hour and a range of 14 to 15 miles. It can also climb hills over 30%. So if you're looking for a board with incredible specs, this is absolutely going to be a good build for you. On a final note, if you're interested in buying a board like this, you can purchase the DIY boosted board clone from our website Propulsion Boards, or you can customize your own to have the perfect wheels, setup, or anything else you'd like from our online store. Whatever board you have in your dreams, we can absolutely work with you to build it and get something that you really like. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more electric skateboard content. Also, let us know what you think of this board by commenting down below.
Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.